Today, we're going to learn how to create this cinematic film look in DaVinci Resolve. Let's dive into it. This footage was shot with a red Epic camera, so let's first set our correct color space with a CSD node to accurately interpret the camera data. Since it's red camera footage, we'll select red white gamut RGB as our input color space and red log 3G10 as our input gamma. For our output color space, we will use DaVinci white gamut color space and the output gamma will be DaVinci intermediate. In the input CSD node, we can skip the tone mapping to avoid initial compression of highlights and shadows. Next, we'll create our output CSD because we need to convert DaVinci White Gamma to Rec 709, the standard for broadcast and online media. Our input color space this time is DaVinci White Gamma, and input gamma is DaVinci Intermediate. Our output color space will be Rec 709, and the output gamma will be gamma 2.4. For the output CSD node, I usually go with DaVinci's own tone mapping algorithm and set the max output to 10,000 nits. So, at this point, we should have a neutral looking image ready for grading. But before we move on, let's label our nodes to keep everything organized. Now, let's build our node structure between these two CSD nodes. First, we'll create a base node for exposure adjustments. This is crucial because getting the exposure right at the start ensures that all later adjustments are based on a solid foundation. Then, I'll add some parallel nodes for secondary grading tasks, like log wheels, color warper, and color density adjustments. Next, we'll set up some nodes for advanced grading techniques, such as depth mapping. Finally, we'll add three more nodes for LUTs and my go-to plugin, Dehancer Pro. In my grading workflow, I always start with the look, because the LUTs and plugins I use will influence the exposure and color balance. When we apply Dehancer, it comes with several default effects which I usually disable to start with a clean slate. To do that with one click, let's scroll down and click the button to turn off all effects. Next, change the quality to high. Since we're working in the DaVinci white gamut color space, let's set Dehancer's color space to DaVinci as well. Then, scroll down to apply the Codec 2383 film print emulation. I generally stick with the default settings, but you might want to experiment with the analog effect to see if it suits your clip. As you can see, Dehancer's default output levels are quite high, so I usually adjust the global output level until it matches my desired look, somewhere around here. In our second Dehancer node, I'll apply halation and bloom effects. Again, let's turn off all the default effects first, then reapply Halation and Bloom. I prefer custom settings for these effects. Again, the default output levels are often too high, so let's lower them to achieve a subtle yet impactful look. For the look, we'll use the Cruces slot by Colin Kelly. I really like the split toning effect of this LUT, but the strength is usually a bit intense for my taste. We can easily adjust this by tweaking the key output levels, so let's bring it down to a more balanced level. With our look established, we can now adjust for correct exposure. In doing so, we need focus on the main subject of the shot. In this case, our talent is the focal point, so her exposure needs to be spot on. We can use the waveform to ensure skin tones fall within the appropriate range, typically between 384 and 640. Let's check it and adjust the exposure. Next, let's refine the skin tones using our secondary tools. I'll open the vector scope 
and make sure the skin tone falls on the skin tone indicator. It seems to be a little off, so let's correct it. For this I use a DCTL by Mononodes. I love this plugin because it allows precise adjustments. Now let's check it again. We can also toggle the adjustment on and off to see the difference. It's looking much better. Maybe we can also lower the saturation slightly and lift the density to achieve a natural look. This is looking good. In the next node I want to focus on the shirt as it appears a little too yellowish. We can correct this using the color warper. First let's increase the number of points for finer adjustments. Then we'll find where the shirt's color sit in the warper. Let's lock surrounding color points to protect those colors, especially the skin tones. Now we can adjust the white of the shirt by pulling it towards the center. Let's toggle the adjustment on and off, looking much better. In the next note, let's address the shadows as they look a little too red. For this, we can go to the log wheels under the primary wheels panel and reduce the red slightly for a more balanced look. Let's toggle it on and off again. As you can see, even a slight adjustment can make a huge difference. Now, to further separate the subject from the background, we'll use depth mapping. First, we'll apply the depth mapping effect to the next node. Make sure to select better for the quality setting. This will give you a more accurate depth map. You can also play with the fine-tuning sliders below, but for the purpose of this video we'll just use the default mapping. Here the brighter parts of the map indicate areas that will be more affected by the adjustments we will make. Now that our depth mapping is ready, we can connect this node to the next using the blue dots. This will allow us to key in the depth map for our adjustments. So in this new node we'll adjust the foreground. Let's lift the exposure on the lighter parts of her skin. Now, let's delete the next node and we'll add an outside node to adjust the background. This means any area not affected by the previous node will be adjusted here. Let's go to the HDR wheels and lower the dark parts of the background slightly to enhance the separation between our subject and the background. Well, there you have it, a stunning cinematic color grade. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos on cinematic color grading. Also if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover, leave a comment below. I'll see you in the next video.